So let's start the demo with uh, the WVD uh, part. And here we have a few resources already deployed in Azure. As you can see, a few virtual machines already deployed. So to do that, let's open RAS console where we have a few uh, things already done, but using the traditional way, a gateway, we have an RD session host, and we have a couple of resources provisioned on this particular resource too a desktop and of course a browser just just to so showcase what we have already so we open the client let's take a look at the properties we're connecting to this particular environment with a wvd user we will launch the desktop so it's a shared desktop like we did before and let's launch internet explorer and this is what we have been doing, again, for a very, very long period of time where you can publish your legacy applications. IE is just to showcase this particular example, right? All right, it's working, so let's close it. Let's close the desktop as well. And let's go to the farm and enable a few things. Let's take a look into WVD settings. We will download the WVD client where you can be in the publishing agent or a network share. We will create a name, which will be WVD deployment. And we can search for credentials. RAS can have their own credentials on the Active Directory, but if we have specific ones on Azure AD, we can add them over here. So let's put the user ID and password. And if you have more than one credential, no problem. We will sequentially use all of them. Then we need to put Azure related information, which is related to the tenant ID, which is your tenant ID, the subscription ID, where all of these WD, uh, WVD deployments will be running. And we need an application ID and key ID. And those have been created on Azure before. Keep in mind, you have to have them created prior we deploy uh, our WVD implementation. Next, we'll verify and let's click on finish. Then the wizard will create a workspace. We can use existing workspaces. See, we can query them uh, throughout the API to Azure, but let's create a new workspace. And in this case, it would be just RAS workspace. Then we will validate, and then we need to set the resource group so you can create your own resource group or use existing one. And then we can click on next and finish the workspace creation. Now we create or use an existing host pool of WVD. So we'll create a new one called WVD desktops, for example. Click next. And here, there are a few options. Can be pulled, application or desktop. We'll select desktop. We can either use a template or a standalone. Let's pick standalone. With this standalone option, we will query the resource group. And searching for prod, we can pick a virtual machine that is already or has been already deployed. And this is Active Directory and Azure AD integration, which group of users will be accessing this resource. So we use WVD users. We will not use optimization at this point for timing, but you could. Next, it's validated. Then we go to the farm. Now there's a new session called Windows Virtual Desktop, which hasn't been applied yet. Everything we did is over here. We can see the host pools as well and click apply. Now, this is in deployment. So we're communicating through the API. This takes a few minutes to be completed, right? So we can see the configuration, the hosts. Now we initialize installing the agent. We can see the assignments, the Azure um, AD groups and users, profiles, optimizations, host pool settings, and printers like we had originally in RAS. When now installing the agent bootloader, which is part of Azure, 
and Windows Virtual Desktops. And once that it's completed, we can move to the next milestone in terms of configuration and settings. If you have any questions, this is the right time because this is processing what we have done and then we can address it. See, it's okay now. We can click okay to make sure those settings are done. We'll see the not verify status. We will refresh the status change to okay. And going back to Azure portal, now we can go to that resource group and resources or the virtual machine as well and see that we created tags and those tags are from RAS API controls. The same thing on the resource group, we can find or search for WVD desktop. It was created as a host pool and application uh, pools and groups. We can manage it from and see that we have the same thing we did on RAS console propagated into uh, Azure portal. Let's search for WVD again and we will see that WVD desktop also was created, tags there. We can see one session host that has been linked to this deployment, one application group settings defined. And if we go back to our RAS console, now we can publish that resource. So let's add, would be a desktop. Next, new option called WVD. The group is already mapped like we did before. We can create the resource name and such, finish. And also you can set the desktop like the size if you want. I will customize one so we can have multiple on the same screen, right? Click apply to save those settings to the agent. Let's refresh the client one more time. And now we have WVD desktop, double click. And what happens here is the new integration that we have it will be logging in if it was the RAS client. And now we open the WVD client. Now we force this stop to stop, the step to stop for you to see how that works. So we can do standard mode, which use the WVD client and you interact with it. And the advanced mode, it's everything behind the scenes where our policies apply. And here is the desktop, right? So let's take a look into the session settings. So go to the main group, session hosts. We'll see that we have one active session. Go into the details, you'll see the same thing, right? So the same information, it would be also available on RAS console. We go to hosts, you see the host connected and session. And there is the user WVD user one connected. Like we do on other deployments, you can right click and show processes, everything running and you can manage it as well. So it's not only viewing, but it's the same experience we have. We can also send a message, hello. And then we'll see that also um, being interacted on the WVD desktop, All right? So let's close it. Let's go back to the REST console and let's try another feature. So we go to host pools and we can add another one. And in this case, we will do one for apps. So we'll be WVD apps, for example. And the option will be application this time. We'll be using a standalone feature, not template at this time. We'll search for um, the same production environment we had it before. We'll pick a virtual machine. Next, we'll add a Azure AD user group or users. So let's put WVD users one more time. Done, next. And then we'll skip again the optimization. And once that it's done, will be able to publish apps. So deployment is in progress. Hosts will see the system is broken in the beginning because we're refreshing, right? We're syncing up agents. That will take a couple of minutes in a production system to, to work and change the signaling 
to prepare host or preparing host. And once that it's done, of course, the status will be changing to um, to OK, right? Any questions, please post them in the Q&A and we'll be addressing as we speak. And look, the agent bootloader is being installed. Now the agent, our agent being deployed. Now we're adding the host pool extension. And now it's okay, ready to go. Okay to save those settings. Refresh. We'll see from deployment in progress to change the status. Okay, that takes a couple minutes. We can at the same time look into Azure. So back to the group. Let's change now to WVD application. We have the user groups and the host pool created. Tags in place. Go to session hosts and application groups. So we have the desktop group that we created before. WVD users and the same thing for apps. So the remote app will be also available. And again, why we're showing this to you, it's to show how we interact and you can see from both sides, right? So let's go to publishing and publish another resource application from WVD, installed application, like we do with RD session host and VDI, we scan the server or the Windows VDI. We see the applications, we have Microsoft Office in this case, let's pick one. We'll finish and apply those settings and then go to the REST client. Like we did before, we refresh the client. Word is there and let's launch it. Uh, just to remind you at this point, we are only doing Windows uh, clients and we will be adding other versions as well. Now the WVD client was invoked. Like I mentioned before, uh, we wanted to stop on this app for you to see how we're interacting via remote app but in production, it's, or a POC, it's a single uh, seamless user ID. And there we go. Word now it's launched in this particular deployment. Open a file, let's create it. And go back to the client, open now Internet Explorer. And now we can see a RAS deployment in WVD side by side. You can see the difference with the icons. One is a parallel shell and the other one is WVD shell. So let's close them. And that's pretty much what we want to show with this um, WVD integration. And the rest of the process is pretty much the same. If you have additional questions, please go to parallels.com slash RAS.